Hi everyone, this is a viewer's question and it's from M. Okay, so I'm not reading the whole email because it's quite long, so I'm just picking bits out of it. So it goes like this. Most teachers of manifesting a specific person seem to have the belief that people respond to us and we are attracting or repelling them based on energy and the subconscious communication between people. The energy they're picking up from us. Therefore, remote seduction, sending love, working on ourselves is recommended. I discovered Neville through Veronica's forum and have watched some of your Neville videos as well. I understand that the technique is simple enough and it's just a case of putting it into practice, in brackets, a thing I'm not finding very easy at the moment, but I'm working on it. When the confusion comes in is there's a common viewpoint around Neville followers, which is quite disturbing. The idea that, no, we are not attracting or repelling anyone, we are creating versions of them. And when they change, we haven't influenced them, we have switched to a different parallel version of them, as all possible states exist now. So different versions of them are different states then this means that we are all living in our own individual reality and there is no objective world. Everyone literally is us pushed out in that case and they're not responding to us. Well, um, they are responding to you because you are projecting, you want to talk about it from an Abraham Hicks point of view or a law of attraction point of view, you're projecting something out. Say, for example, um, they are stubborn or they are nasty or they're emotionally unavailable or I love how kind they are to me you're projecting that out so you're going to get a version of them that matches that so if you want to call it do it the law of attraction way whether you say I'm projecting something out and then the law of attraction is bringing the version of them in that matches that or you can do it the Neville way which is they are changing states. As you change states, they change states and you are selecting a different version of them. It's just a different way around the wheel, but it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. So you've said a bit further on, they are not responding to us. Well, I say that they are because I can tell you from experience when I change, they were person who I am in relationship with, whether it's a friend, whether it's a parent, whether it's uh, a specific person, they respond differently to me if I am in a different state. Okay, so that answers the question of free will but also makes it feel like other people would just seem like autonomous robots. This method makes it more about belief and entirely on a mental level that what you believe is true will be created and isn't on feeling or energy level. Well, it's, it's on all levels, M. It's people aren't robots. They are moving around doing what they're doing, but you, how they appear in front of you is a direct reflection of how you are and how you think, feel, and believe what thoughts, feelings, and beliefs you have about them. Okay, so they're not robots. They do bring their own selves to the relationship with you, but the version of them that, that, that appears on any given day is a direct relation on how you are, okay? So, for example, like Dr. Hugh Lenn in the hospital, as he changed his state and dissolved the part of him that created them, then they changed okay but he said he didn't work on them he worked on himself so I hope that makes sense so let me continue on people that believe that, that this say that self-love is only useful in helping us to remain in the feeling of the wish fulfilled and isn't actually a requirement in itself for manifestation well I don't agree I think the better your self-love is, the better your manifestations are. And why do I say that? Because I'm using my own life as an experience and I can only speak from that. I'm not going to talk out of a book or out of the knowledge that I've read or out of something that someone told me. I will tell you directly from my experience. 
the better my self-love has been, the better my relationships have become, the better my bank account has become, the more meaningful my work has become, the more at peace and relaxed I have become, the more fulfilled I have become. So, you know, you can keep self-love right out of it. See how you go. I tried to do that for a long time and just manifest by doing the head stuff and trying to feel good about it. But when your self-love's not good and you're feeling un unwanted and unloved underneath, then you're kind of trying to ice a rotten cake, I think. That's just my opinion. So you have said, good questions, by the way. This is really interesting. So just going back to that, people that believe that this say that self-love is only useful in helping us to remain in the feeling of the wish fulfilled and isn't actually a requirement in itself for manifestation. They also believe that all the other techniques like sending love and remote seduction aren't necessary since in their minds there is no recipient. Well, that's fine. They can believe that if they want. <laughs> uh, I mean, there really is only you because your person, your job, your wallet is a hologram version of what you believe about that subject. So, yeah, it, that's, there is you, your version of every subject laid out before you. Yeah. So you say, I've spent some time feeling quite freaked out about this and only really have just got to a more relaxed place about it all. I'm not going to abandon everything I've learned about spirituality, not just relating to LOA in the past 10 years, for a thing that has no scientific proof. There is logic behind it, but I have a lot of questions it can't answer. Okay. This is what I want to say about scientific proof. I know some of you need it and there's nothing wrong with that, but I can tell you the thing that trumps scientific proof, spiritual proof, knowledge in a book is your experience and your results. That's where the meat is, the meat on the bone. Really, who gives a toss what other people say? If something is working for you, who cares? Because you are the evidence. You know, it's like people that often say in Law of Attraction groups and some very big authors too, you can't manifest a specific person. And yet there are those of us that have done it. So if you believe you can't manifest a specific person, then you will get the result of your belief. You will never will. And that's okay. If you don't want to manifest one, you don't believe you can, then it's not an issue. But if you're someone like a lot of people on this channel that want to manifest a specific person, it's really important to you, then that bit of information isn't good. It's actually really disturbing, as a lot of you know, because you have come to this channel and you've gone to Veronica Isles' channel and you've listened to Dan Radio Style and other people that believe in it and you've read Neville, who's obviously done it too. So experience trumps everything. All this law of attraction stuff, all this Neville stuff, all this whoever you're reading, Florence Scovel Shin, Joseph Murphy, Wallace Waddles, Napoleon Hill, Catherine Ponder, um, you know, there's so many authors. They don't all agree on stuff. So you've got to take bits of it and try it. And that's where you get your confidence and that's where you get your assuredness and your self-reassurance, okay? So... Continuing on, I can't see how the principle of unconditional love can fit in with that model or how God that loves us would create a reality that would drive people mad. No, I agree with you. When they figure out how it works, I've also noticed that a couple of times I have felt really positive loving feelings and felt good about myself, my specific person talks to me more. Well, there you go. There's the evidence. And you, you go, okay, well, there's evidence of something. So my request is maybe if you could explain your perspective on that. I'm sure you've come across these people's point of view. Yes. But I can't understand how they can go about their lives and be okay with the idea that they're the only one in their reality without science proving anything. Well, look, um, some of us don't need science. I've, you know, I've read a lot about, you know, the quantum physics and the metaphysics and all that stuff. And I know many of you are interested in it and that's totally fine. 
but it's it's the application it's the feeling and the knowing no amount of reading science or spiritual books or new age books or anything doesn't matter which category you're looking at is going to replace you trying something and getting a result then you don't give a rat's ass about the science the metaphysics the quantum physics the spiritual books that have said this the because you know it's not even believing you know you know you know in the meat and the marrow of your bones what is right for you so you know that's just my opinion again so you're saying I'm okay with not understanding how we create reality and accepting that I don't know as long as I do the technique and it works yes but now I'm kind of confused about whether to just apply what Neville says in case it's true what these people believe or do I do a bit of everything in case we were all in the same reality and we're responding to each other I've been trying to find people to talk to about this but they're either biased or not informed on both both sides I thought it would be good to hear what you think about it since you use both Neville and other stuff in what you teach sorry the email's so long I'm hoping to start making some progress and soon stop getting distracted by all this stuff I think I know what I need to do from now I didn't feel that I got what I wanted from Veronica's coaching but it helped me in some ways I'm going to keep going and see how I to get on but I've always wondered how much you charge okay darling if you want that bit of information just email me but look I understand what you're saying because it there is moments where when you understand both lots of things you know there is a colliding and and you know then there's the whole thing about just pray for God's will and then you will get what you're supposed to get but that that whole thing just totally defeats having desires and going for them so you know you there's a just a, a whole myriad of different belief systems and I know when you're learning and trying to get through this stuff it can fry your little brain cells because it did the same for me but just try try it one way for you know six months or something and or try it for three months and then you go to try the other way for three months and see which one you like the best because it's a feeling thing you've got to feel in that it's enjoyable that it's working that it's fun it's got to be that there's some freedom and some you know just that 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 thirst for trying to work it out and, and seeing what pops up it's like popping popcorn some ideas work some concepts work you know I know some concepts that I've heard from you know different teachers I've tried it and I've gone I, I just can't I'm just not vibing with that and yet they're amazing teachers that I've tried other things that they've said and I really like it so use yourself as your own guinea pig experiment and just try things out and then gauge it by the results that you get and then what happens is over time you see which things work really well for you and then you kind of let the other stuff go and you go this works really well this works really well that worked extremely well that didn't work at all <sighs> let's let that go okay so you just do it that way and you make it as fun as you can and make it as enjoyable as you can and I think letting go of all that stuff has helped me it's like you learn it and then you got to let go and just do the couple of things that really work and for me it boils down to very few things meditation as in self-love or for a specific thing imagining a particular desire already happening living in the end living the wish fulfilled kind of meditations second thing self-love third thing affirmations and fourth thing living in the end that to me is my little toolbox you know do I do other things yes sometimes I do a vision board on the 1st of January every year you know while I've been traveling I haven't been doing it as much because I don't have anywhere to pin it up you know because I'm traveling so scripting I've tried at different times um, you know using whispering technique and all these different things and it's fun to trial things out but when you get a couple of things that works get very good and very focused and don't scatter your energies too much because I think that's part of the problem is that scattering the energy and it's not concentrated and pinpointed on one thing or on a couple of things that work really well
Okay, so hope that helps and um, I'll see you in the next viewers question YouTube. I'll put the playlist down for the others viewers questions. That playlist is getting quite big and there's lots of really good questions in it now. So I'll put that playlist down below from you for you and there's also another playlist called general ones and there's lots of good YouTubes in there I'll put that playlist down for you as well so you can have a look